the Dynamics GP Blogster here. Today I want to talk about the optimized form processing AI builder model, which does allow you to take multiple documents with different layouts and use a single model to analyze those documents and produce the uh, results for those documents. So think of this. Say you have an inbox where you get or receive vendor invoices. Those vendor invoices, of course, based on each individual company, are different between those organizations. So the idea then is you can use a flow in Power Automate to analyze those documents, get, uh, take them from your inbox and decompose them and submit them for approval and then probably hand them off to e your ERP system. So those are the kind of capabilities that are being delivered with this new form processing control. And I am here today to show you how to use the form processing AI builder model and then how to perhaps incorporate it into Microsoft Power Automate for usage in a practical scenario. So let's see how that is done. Okay, so here we are in the Power App Studio and I'm just gonna go ahead and click here on AI Builder. And I already have a model that I created previously. This is my vendor invoices model. I'm gonna click on it here. And we're gonna go ahead and quick test that model. Uh, it's a model that I already put together. So I'm just gonna quick test this model. And I'm gonna drop this build document on it. Okay, so this is a document um, that I currently have. And what we'll see is the model will actually go through and identify the different fields that I told it to identify. So here we have the build number. It has a confidence of 60%, that, that, that's what it is. Here we have the uh, due date. It has a 55% confidence and so on. So this is um, a model that was designed to identify three different types of bills. So I'm just gonna start over here and I'm gonna just go ahead then and choose a different bill and I'm gonna drop it here. And this is gonna go through and identify the same fields with the same model that I created, the same fields that, are, um, that were programmed to be identified. So we have the bill date, the due date. It also identified the invoice number somewhere, the amount and also account number. So here we are. All right, cool. So this is two out of two. We can then go ahead and start over. And finally, I can tell it, identify this particular bill as well. Now, as you can see, this is a different bill, different layout altogether. And I will go ahead and tell it to um, identify the different components that are part of that bill as well. These are typical business scenarios, right? You have different documents that are arriving from vendors and uh, customers even. And you could actually train a model to identify those different layouts accordingly. So here we have, again, the account number, the bill date, the amount due, and we can see then that this is the full invoice number. And uh, somewhere here, we have some other pieces of data that are probably not relevant to this particular discussion, but certainly you can program your model to identify any particular item that you want out of this. So let's see how this was built. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to build and I'm going to create a new form processing model. So if you actually uh, look at it, these are the custom models that you have. These are actually the pre-built models. I'm going to click on form processing. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this model and we're going to call this, um, you know, supplier invoices. Okay. So I need um, five documents of the same model. And we're just going to click on create here to go ahead and um, begin this process of identifying or labeling my documents. Now, this experience is slightly different from the past. The idea here is that you will determine in advance what tags you're going to use for the fields that you're going to create. So, or you're going to want the document to identify because since they have different layouts, 
Some vendors might call it account number or vendor ID or customer ID. Some might call it account number. So there are different terminologies for different aspects of the document depending on who's sending the information. But at the very least, we're going to enter an invoice number. Okay. We're going to want to identify an account number. We're going to want to identify a due date. We're going to want to identify a bill date. And we're going to want to identify an invoice amount. Okay. So those are five fields that we are going to initially work with. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add collections. So this is also new from the prior experience. And the collections here simply are going to be the different documents that we're going to identify. So let's say my first collection will be, let's say, my Xfinity invoices. And Xfinity happens to be a provider here in the United States that does cable and internet services. I'm going to add a new collection. And this one I'm going to call Roswell. So this is my city utilities. And finally, I'm going to identify a new collection and I'm going to call this uh, Sony. That's my electric bill. Now, what I have found is as a best practice, you will probably want to actually label these collections based on the name of the supplier or the vendor. In this particular case, since we're building a, a supplier invoices model, you will probably want to identify this based on the name of the supplier. Why? It makes it easy to then have to go back and adjust that model if you need. If you have to add other new collections for other new documents, then you can easily distinguish that from any other prior collection that you built. So just a tip based on what I've observed and my particular interaction with this feature. So for the Xfinity, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and add documents and I'm going to actually upload them from my local storage. Keep in mind that you can do it from SharePoint or Azure storage. That's up to you. So I'm going to go to my pictures folder and I'm going to go to invoice forms. And since I'm actually working with Xfinity, I need five documents at the very minimum to train this model. So I'm just going to click on open here and um, I'm going to upload those five documents. So that should initiate the process of loading the documents. Then they're done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same for the Roswell collection. So I'm going to upload from my local storage. And these are the documents that I'm using to train or actually train the model with the information that we have. So I'm going to take these five documents. Now, one more thing, these have to be distinct documents. You cannot just copy paste one and then do it five times and rename it. That's not going to work. Okay. So they have to be distinct documents. And uh, then finally, I'm going to actually upload the Sony collection. So these are the five different documents for my electric bill that I'm actually choosing to upload. And there we go. So done. These are all the documents that I need for now. I have identified in a, a total of 15 documents and now I'm going to process them. I'm going to actually put them, put the model to analyze them in order to extract information that's on those documents based on those layouts. So I'm going to click on analyze here. That's going to begin the process and we will be back in a second when this is done. Okay, that entire process took over seven minutes to complete. So what we want to do then is we have some stop points here. And this is, we are at the process of the step where we need to tag these documents. So what are we going to tag on them? Well, we're going to tag the values that we identified initially when we set up the uh, information to extract. So I'm going to click here on the Xfinity document. And as you can see, I'm now being told to tag them. So let's just go ahead then. And this is loading the fields that were identified. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a match with the tags that we created. 
So here we go. The first thing is, just for an example, if we tag this one, this is going to be my amount due. So here it is. The, that's the one that we decided to call invoice amount in the tag. Very simple. That's awesome. Very easy to do. Let's then go ahead and look at other information. We have the account number up here. And what I want to do is I want to highlight the whole thing and call this account number. Perfect. Now this up here is my bill date. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select this as bill date. Boom. What I'm going to do here then is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look at the account number. So we already have that. I'm going to look at this value down here as the invoice number. So this is the invoice number. And um, this will be the due date. So here we are, the due date. All right, as you can see, I, I was able to match up all these fields. And then what I got to do is I got to go through each one of the individual documents that are part of that. And then um, the system will make a, a good attempt at identifying then the value in the subsequent document. So all I got to do is if anything is mistagged, go and retag it or simply go and um, match up the ones that are still pending. So I'm just going to hit got it here. And then the next thing I'm, I got to do is I still got to match the invoice number. So here's my invoice number here and boom, that's what I'm going to tell it it is. And um, then once I'm done, I'm going to go through the other document. I'm going to then still tag the invoice number. So here we are. This is the invoice number. And um, that's what I'm going to match here. And then I'm going to go through this other one and tag the invoice number as well, because that's probably what's missing. So as you can see, this is not an exact science, but it's definitely something that um, will help you quickly in matching up the, the tags that are missing. So I'm sure this is going to improve over time and you will have or find yourself doing less and less of this that I'm doing here now, which is tagging the fields. Boom. So now that I'm done with my first document, I can go back to, uh, I can backtrack out of Xfinity and then now do the Roswell uh, tags in particular. So. This is my first document for the Roswell tag and um, it's loading up the fields again that I identified initially. So hopefully this was a little bit faster than it is right now, but that's kind of, you know, a first attempt at this model. So I would assume that the performance in this will be improved significantly over, um, over time. So for now, great job AI builder team. This is exactly what I was looking for in particular. Now I'm going to go back here and tag this and then um, this will be my bill date. All right. So that's my state statement date. And what I want you to see is that these things are actually changing based on the, on the, um, on the supplier that sent it to me. So here, this one will be the account number. So it's probably these four things. So that's the account number and um, the amount due is up here. So uh, this is the invoice amount. And this is effectively the due date and the invoice number will be somewhere down here. There we go. So we tag that and we're good to go. So the same thing is if I move now to the second document, look, it inferred every single one of them. And all I got to do is confirm that that's exactly what it is I'm done with this one too. So let's take a look at this and see if it identifies everything effectively it did. So now I'm done with Roswell. Uh, let's see. It seems like I skipped one. Let's make sure that everything is fine. Yeah, there we go. Everything is fine. And I can then go to Suwani and complete the process for Suwani. So I'll be back in a second uh, when I'm done tagging all these. So once we've done tagging all the documents and we've been through the process, we will then be thrown into the um, model summary. So if I hit next here, this is actually the model that I, that I've uh, selected. These are the fields that we initially selected for tagging and certainly the number of images I use for 
tagging those particular fields on. And then I've this defined three collections. It's telling me that the model type is form processing. So that's not obvious. And the next thing we gotta do is train that model. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click train here. And that is gonna go through the process of wrapping up that model. So now I can go to models and I can see that um, my supplier invoices is being trained. So that's uh, gonna take some time, of course. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that at the end you test that model, just kind of like what I did with the vendor invoices, where you can do a quick test and run it through the process to make sure everything is identified. We'll wait for this to complete. Okay, that took a good four minutes to train. The next thing that we wanna do now then is open this model again. And um, now you can see that the next thing that's left is to publish that particular model. So I'm just gonna click on publish here and that's gonna initiate the publishing process. As you can see now that model is actually ready uh, for consumption. So we're gonna do a quick test here. And then we're going to drag one of those images that we used to test that model. So we're going to go here and I'm going to grab the Xfinity April build and put it here. And that's just going to go through and quick test it for us. So as you can see, this is going through the process of analyzing the document. And it should come back with some information regarding the uh, form that's being analyzed. So it's identified the account number, it's a 100% confidence score, the billing date, 100% confidence score, it's identified the amount due, it's 100% confidence on that one, the due date, 100% confidence on that, and the invoice number, it's 100% confidence on that as well. So very simple process, we can actually start over and quick test another um, document so let's take our January bill for the city of Roswell. And uh, we will see how that one is broken down as well. Once again, in this particular case, there's 100% confidence on the bill date. There's 100% confidence on the account number. 100% confidence on the invoice amount. And 100% confidence on the due date. Now, if we look at um, other fields down here, there is 100% confidence on the bill number. Now, this is pretty cool because the first time I actually had gone through training this model, model when it was in preview, these were coming back with 60% confidence. And this tells me that these guys have actually worked out a lot of kinks in the way um, this model was recognizing documents. So that's pretty cool. This basically concludes my presentation on the new form processing uh, AI builder model. And what I will be doing is in my subsequent video, I will be showing you how you can use that model with say Microsoft Power Automate to process multiple um, forms coming from different sources with the same model. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. <music>